Millionaires think differently than the rest of the 99% of people. They think differently about money, they think differently about people, they think differently about situations and they think differently about themselves. What if it takes just a slight shift in mindset to change your whole financial trajectory? Because what you think determines how you feel, that determines how you act and that determines what you get. I have been learning about financial success and how to become a millionaire and what it takes to get there over the past few years. I can tell you it's not something that happens overnight, but starting to think like a millionaire is actually one of the first things that we can do. And as it turns out, it's also one of the most important things that we can do. Now, ordinary people, and I will call all people that are non-millionaires, ordinary people, please take it with a grain of salt, because obviously there's a wide range of differences in culture and behavior and opinion. But ordinary people often blame the circumstances. If my parents had, if my employer would, if the market would, and somehow someone else ends up being responsible for their situation, instead of recognizing that it's actually them that lets them stay there, that lets it keep happening. Again, I'm harshly simplifying this to make my points. And the goal here is to recognize maybe your own thinking patterns in order to change them. And millionaires, they take responsibility because they don't want the control to be outside of themselves. They take responsibility for their actions, for their finances, for their career. And they know that that gives them the power to change something, to change something about their situation. And that doesn't mean that nothing ever happens to a millionaire. On the contrary, I mean, problems and obstacles arise in all of our lives. I think that's something we all share as human beings. The question is, do you take responsibility? And I remember a quote I heard, I just don't remember where from. And it says that not everything that happens to you is your fault, but it is your responsibility. And in a way, we all have to play the cards that we are dealt with. And that also brings me to my next point. And that is ordinary people see many of those cards as problems and as obstacles that hinder them from getting what they want. I never got taught finances in school. That's why I'm bad with money. The market situation now is bad. That's why do do do. And they use those things as an excuse and that excuse at the same time allows them to stay in their comfort zone. They accept the circumstances as something that is not changeable and by that they like stay in their scope, if you will. And millionaires, on the other hand, they see those problems and obstacles as an opportunity, as a challenge, an opportunity to grow, an opportunity to learn a challenge to overcome the problem or the obstacle and not be defined by it or held back by it. And by doing so, millionaires move beyond their scope. They move out of their comfort zone. And by that, they create a new normal. And it's not that they are not scared too. It's just that they act despite their fear, knowing that it's what moves them forward and that it's the right thing and that eventually someone good will come out of it. So for a millionaire, failure is a way to learn, while for ordinary people, failure is often something that crushes their self-worth. And to take this perspective of seeing a problem or an obstacle as a challenge, I think is actually easier if you have a goal. And that is another way of thinking. Millionaires are very goal-oriented. And those can be completely different goals. They can be money-related or they cannot be money-related but they do have something that keeps them going and that keeps them on track. They are committed to that goal and they make it happen no matter what. And that also means that they align their actions to achieve the goal. And if those actions require to solve a problem, then so be it. And ordinary people, on the other hand, either they have no goals or they do have goals, but they don't make them a priority. And that way they don't align their actions or their behavior with their goals. And what also helps to stay goal oriented is when the goal is big. Millionaires think big. There's even a book about it, The Magic of Thinking Big. And I saw a YouTube video with a story about Jeff Bezos. And there was this guy, one of his mentors, and Jeff Bezos asked him if he wanted to invest in his company. And back then, and that was 25 years ago, this young Jeff Bezos told him, I'm going to sell books over the internet and this company is going to be worth $100 billion. Not million, billion. 
Now that's a big goal. And the guy back then was like, a hundred billion, that's not even a thing. That wasn't even a thing back then. And I think in hindsight, it's even crazier that he not just reached the goal, but he exceeded it by two times. The magic of thinking big. And of course, with this kind of perspective, every problem becomes so small because the goal is so big. And I'm going to show you a picture that I found in the book from Bodo Schäfer, where I see this is much more imaginable. So if you look here, the goal is this big and then the problem kind of like cannot be overwhelming anymore because the goal is always in sight or, or stays in sight. And what you also might have noticed what's at play here is long-term planning. Millionaires have a long-term perspective. So it's not about where I'm going to be in six months from now. It's about where I want to be in 10 years from now, 20 years from now, maybe 30 years from now. And what steps I have to take right now to get there. While on the other hand, ordinary people, and again, please take this with a grain of salt, because obviously not 99% of people do this. But let's just take the vast majority of people who live paycheck to paycheck. And that's what? Like one month, maybe even two weeks. That's the difference between long-term and short-term. If I just sold you on the long-term planning, you can consider subscribing because it's what we talk about on this channel. And with the goal in mind, millionaires also take risks. And not the kind of I could lose everything risk, so the reckless kind of risk, but calculated risk. Jeff Bezos had a good job in finance before he started working on Amazon. Who else a bit more like normal comes to my mind? I listened to an interview with Cody Sanchez recently. She left her job at Goldman Sachs to do her own thing in private equity. And all that while ordinary people rather stay on the safe side. And I don't even mean to build your own business. I'm actually not an advocate of this whole you can only become rich by building your own business trend that I often see on the internet. Because I do think that being a business owner is not for everyone. And I think that leaning into your strengths and leveraging them is actually more important. And if that means building your own business for you, then that's good but it also can be, for example, within a company. And in that context, even saying, I leave this company where I have a safe job and I move on to the next company where I maybe can leverage my strengths even more, is also a way of a calculated risk. And that calculated risk also holds true for investments. There's also a quote that comes into my mind and I also don't remember where I heard it, but ordinary people focus on income and rich people focus on equity. Now, income alone will not make you rich. I just read or heard a story about a guy who earned $800,000 per year over the course of like 10 years and he still had a net worth of around zero. And the reason for that is that his programming about money led to him basically spending it all. But that programming topic is a story for another time. Millionaires build equity. So they invest their money into different assets that then create several different income streams for them. And that then is income that they have without having to actively work for it anymore. And there was something I heard Myron Golden say that really stuck with me. And he said, poor people and middle class people believe that most things are expensive because they paid for things with money they exchanged time for. So they feel like paying for everything with their life and that's because they are. And that totally explains why people with only one income stream see everything through the lens of cost. And this lens thing is an analogy I just took from Ramit Sethi. But really, ordinary people see costs everywhere. The car costs this and this much. Housing costs this much. Groceries cost that much. There is even this method of evaluating purchases in worked for hours. So like a new iPhone is this and this much in working hours from your life. And this can even be helpful for spenders to get a grip of how much they're actually spending for their things and how much they do have to work for their purchases. But in this context, really for me, it was an epiphany that poor people actually do pay for stuff with their time and that rich people, especially when they cover their living costs from their investments, they see costs through a totally different lens because they don't have to work for it actively anymore. And for that, you actually don't have to be a millionaire yet because let's say your investments return $1,000 per year that already covers a new iPhone, an iPhone that you don't actively have to work anymore for. 
And I think this perspective also leads to millionaires seeing money as something positive. It's a positive force, it creates something new, especially if you put your money into investments that then pay you back. And to many millionaires, and for me as well, it's why I'm walking this path, money means freedom. The freedom to work what you want, when you want, where you want, and also with whom you want. And it can maybe even be the freedom to not work at all. While for ordinary people, on the other hand, money is something that they have to work for. And that can even become a negative thing, especially if you're not 100% satisfied with your job. And of course, there are also all these other like bad money connotations, like money is the root of all evil and money spoils the character and so on. And this not only can, but this does actually keep people from building wealth. Because when you attach money to a negative emotion, you're going to self-sabotage you having it. Exactly like the guy who earned the 800,000 per year and ended up spending it all. And part of that, what money means to you and how this affects your choices and also your behavior is a question of learning. And for ordinary people, education and learning usually stops with school, with high school or with college. So it's like there's a time for learning and then there's a time for working or, you know, putting the learned stuff into the execution. And this may even include like the further education, but not in a way that it would move the needle in their job, let alone the other areas in their life. And millionaires, and I think what really many of them have in common is they never stop learning. They know that they have to keep growing as a person to reach their goal. And so they keep learning and they also keep this like beginner's mind because they know that this attitude of I already know that can even become dangerous because it can get you stuck. And by the way, I don't mean institutionalized learning here like a master or a PhD. Although I will never argue against university education because I'm quite an academic person myself. And also because statistically people with a college degree have a higher income and also a higher net worth in, I would say, probably every Western country. But what I rather mean is the kind of learning where you ask questions, where you see maybe room for improvements, where you just stay open to like learn new things, even if that does again put you into the like beginner's position. So either way, lifelong learning is a part of the millionaire mindset. And now that you have learned about some new thinking patterns, the next thing you might want to do is to put them into action and develop some millionaire habits. Thank you for watching this far. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.